So you hopped into the wood pellet pizza oven market and you're realizing that, man, this thing's a freaking pellet hog. Today, we're gonna learn how to feed the hog for less. What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Jason from JTV Life here. In this video, we're gonna explore using something other than the wood pellets in our wood pellet bighorn outdoor pizza oven. Today, we're gonna be using some hardwood lump charcoal. Now, I got the idea from this video from some comments left by Gus C and Christina. Thanks a lot, guys, for hitting me up in the comments. Please, guys, let me know in those comments what you wanna see. This is where I get ideas for content that y'all wanna watch. If you're new, and you haven't yet subscribed, subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way you guys don't miss a single video here. So in preparation for this video, I watched a couple other videos on YouTube of people using things other than pellets inside of their wood-fired pellet pizza oven. Now, I think that the Uni is advertised as a multi-fuel, so they kind of suggest that you can use other things. This one is just strictly a pellet uh, oven, or at least that's how it's advertised. So I watched a couple other videos and saw how people are doing it. And one thing that nobody was using, and I do, I'm pretty surprised, is one of these charcoal chimneys. Because this is going to allow us to get that charcoal good and burning before we go ahead and add it to the oven. If you remember from the instructions on the big horn, it has you get 300 grams of pellets in this little box burning good and well before you then stick it into the oven. Now this tray I don't think is going to be able to hold a lot of our lump charcoal and be able to be still slid into the back. So I'm going to leave this in the whole time and we're going to get our lump charcoal fired up inside our charcoal chimney. If you guys are playing around with charcoal and you don't have one of these yet, I don't know what you're doing with your life. To ignite it, we're gonna use these little Weber pucks. These things are pretty cool. I found these the first time a couple summers ago. Instead of using traditional lighter fluid, you just put this underneath your chimney, light it up, and then it'll provide enough heat to get your charcoal nice and lit. And it's awesome because you don't gotta go spraying all the chemicals and lighter fluid and stuff on top of your charcoal. If you're using that Insta-like garbage, I definitely say get rid of that. Do a lump charcoal with one of these on the bottom. You're gonna have a lot less funky flavors because if you don't let all that lighter fluid burn off, you're just cooking your food with that and that ain't no good. Here at JTV Life, we like to follow the science and I gotta tell you all the science don't lie. So we're gonna put a couple controls in to make sure we are comparing in fact apples to apples. Got a little food scale here and I'm gonna weigh out the 300 grams worth of fuel that they say we need to get it going plus 450 grams that then get added after the firebox gets entered into the back of the uni. And then we're gonna time it and see how long it burns. We're also gonna take note of how long of that time it is in the optimal cooking temp, i.e. 700 degrees and above. To do that, we have a infrared thermometer. This puppy maxes out at 750. It's a few years old. Fluke actually makes one now that goes even higher. Check out the description below for everything that you see in this video. Of course, these are affiliate links. That way I can get a little bit of return on my investment with y'all. This stuff has a lot less mass than the pellets do. We're just hitting 350, 360 right here with only three pieces. So I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna set them aside because we're gonna put them in a bag and break them up. So just so we have a visual comparison, I weighed out 750 grams of our wood pellets next to our 750 grams of our whole lump charcoal. And you can definitely see that this is less dense, takes up a lot more area than the more dense wood pellets. How this will affect the cook, we're about to find out. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this lump charcoal, I'm gonna put it in a paper bag and just whack it with a hammer a few times, break it up and make it a little bit smaller so we can fit it down the gullet of the big horn. Now that we got our charcoal broken up, we'll go ahead and ignite it. 
make sure you do this on some concrete or stone or sand. Don't want to be doing this on grass or a wood table or by the cat. Get that little puck lid up. Throw the charcoal chimney on there. Toss in our lump charcoal. We're gonna wait about 15, 20 minutes until this is completely lit and we'll get it in the oven. After only 10 minutes, the charcoal looks like it is ready to go into the oven. It's all glowing, it's pretty ashy, so we don't wanna burn it up too much in the chimney. We want it to burn in the oven, continue to ignite, preheat the oven, and then we'll start timing it to see how long it cooks for. Definitely put some gloves on for this if you don't have a high tolerance to heat. Probably also not a good idea to do this on a wood table, but YOLO. All right, so I got the firebox filled all the way to the brim, and we still have a little bit of charcoal in here, including some charcoal that got wasted because it fell through the bottom of this and onto the sidewalk. So that's definitely something to take note of when we're judging which is the most economical fit for this oven. All right, so I was able to mash down the charcoal to get a little bit more room. I'm gonna see if we can fit the rest of the charcoal in here. Got just about all of it in. All right, now that we got all of our charcoal loaded in here, we're gonna give it 10 minutes to preheat. We'll check back in, hit it with a temp gun and see where it's at heat wise. All right, so while that charcoal is preheating in the grill, let's take a quick second so we can understand the economics and the difference between our lump charcoal and our Traeger pellets. The lump charcoal I purchased from a local grocery store and it came to $10 after tax. The bag was 3.6 kilos and that works out to around 27 cents per 100 grams. So for 750 grams needed to run the oven through one cycle, we're looking at a cost of $2.03. The Traeger pellets, on the other hand, come in a nine kilogram bag and after tax cost $21 at my local hardware store. This comes to a cost of around 23 cents per 100 grams, which is slightly under the cost of the lump charcoal. So for a 750 gram burn cycle of the Traeger pellets inside the Bighorn wood pellet burning pizza oven, we are looking at around $1.73. So really not much of a savings here economically wise. So I guess where the savings could possibly come in is if our charcoal will burn longer than our pellets. Lump charcoal's been inside the big horn for 10 minutes. If you remember from the directions, it says 18 minutes preheat time on this with the pellets. So we are gonna give it the full 18, but let's just give it a little check in there, see what the temperatures are, see what that flame looks like. All right, so the inside of the oven is anywhere between 320 and 400 degrees, depending on where I shoot it. And the flames are just starting to come up out of the firebox. We'll check back in in eight minutes and see where it's at. Quick look in the back. It doesn't quite have the flames it has when it's operating on the pellets. Let's hit it with this temp gun and see what we have. Still only reading around 360 to 400 degrees. The flame in the back is barely coming out of the firebox. Well, I gotta say folks, the lump charcoal looks like it's pretty much a bust. 
I'm not even gonna time it to see how long it burns for because it hasn't even gotten to the temperature that we need to get it to to make a badass Neapolitan pizza. For the sake of experimentation, now that we know that the pellets are actually cheaper than the lump charcoal, we're gonna reset this experiment and do more of a hybrid method. We're gonna put the 300 grams of pellets into the firebox, ignite it with our torch, then instead of adding the 450 grams of the pellets, we're just gonna add a couple pieces of the lump charcoal and see if the wood pellets get hot enough in there to then ignite our lump charcoal and possibly achieve a longer bird time than we would otherwise with the pellets. If you know anything about using the Big Horn or have had any experience with it, you know she's only whipping out the best pizzas when she has flames coming out the top. So that's how we're gonna run this experiment. I have 250 grams of Traeger pellets here, and I have 250 grams of lump charcoal here. I've already put 300 grams of Traeger pellets in the firebox to get it up and running. We have flames coming out the top now. I'm just gonna start adding Traeger pellets and see how long I can get it to burn with flames coming out the top. Then we'll reset and we're gonna repeat it with the charcoal. All right, so now that we officially have flames coming out the top, we're gonna go ahead and start adding Traeger pellets and get our timer going. So we just got 250 grams of Traeger pellets put into the grill. I'm gonna go ahead and start a timer right now and see how long it takes to get our flames, and then we'll reset that timer and see how long those flames burn. Let's get going. It's been 45 seconds and we officially have flames out the top. Let's start timing how long it burns. All right, the Fluke infrared thermometer is maxed out. So we know we're above 750. So that's an awesome cook temp been about five minutes and we still have a healthy flame on the inside. I definitely think 200 grams, 250 grams is the perfect first addition for the pellets. I've added only 100 before and it kind of burned up too quick, but if you add the 450, it's gonna smoke for a long time like a choo-choo train rolling through the yard and it's not really gonna ignite like you'd want it to. So this is kind of like a lesson learned just doing this experiment. Next time I cook with the pellets, I'm gonna add them 250 grams at a time. We are at seven minutes, 40 seconds and our flame is done. Flip the lid back and our pellets are looking just about cashed out with enough heat in them to hopefully ignite our lump charcoal. Now you can see the 250 grams of lump charcoal is a lot more area than the 250 grams of Traeger pellets was. So I might not even be able to add all this. I'm just gonna go ahead and try and get about half of it in there. We'll start our timer, see what our lag time is. And we'll see how long they burn for. All right, we'll go ahead and start our timer, see how long it takes to start getting those flames out the top. So we are at four minutes right now, and I don't think we're gonna get those flames coming out the top. The lump charcoal is completely ignited and it's burning brightly. The inside temperature of the oven is still above 750 because my thermometer is maxed out. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the timer for the burn time, and we'll see how long it can burn for before it drops below 750. All right, so we're at six minutes and our stone on the bottom just started to get into the upper 600 degrees. So a little bit short of what the pellets did, but remember, we didn't burn all of our charcoal yet. I'm gonna go ahead and add some more and see if we can get the tent back up in a reasonable amount of time. Five, 
four minutes after our lump charcoal addition, the temperature has still not recovered and the whole inside of the oven is loaded with ash. All right, well, I'm not even gonna go on any longer. I think we're just gonna call this whole experiment a bust. The lump charcoal is not where it's at. Yes, this thing's a pellet hog, but you know what? If you're counting pennies over charcoal versus pellets, maybe you shouldn't be in the pizza game. Go ahead and get you a Tony's or a Tostino's throw it in the toaster oven and gobble it down. Pretty much what we learned here is the wood pellets are superior, not only because they are cheaper than the lump charcoal, but they're easier to ignite and they burn more hot when they're lit. That flame comes across the top of the oven, tickling it, coming down, raining down that beautiful golden bubbly cheese on your pizza. It burns for about eight minutes on 250 grams. Now the lump charcoal on 100 grams burned for about six minutes, so just slightly under with half of the amount. However, there was some lag time before it got fired up. And then in subsequent rounds, there was substantial lag time in getting the rest of the lump charcoal to ignite. So with the pellets, even though the flame kind of dies down, you throw some more pellets on it and they're gonna ignite fairly quickly and they're all gonna burn at the same time or the lump charcoal is burning from the outside to the inside. So, and my conclusion, not only are you saving money pound for pound, key for key, when you do the Traeger pellets, but you're just having a more user-friendly experience and getting a better product in the long run. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit that like button on the way out. Let me know in the comments, what are y'all burning in your ovens? You using just straight up hardwood? You guys crushing up some lump charcoal like I did in the first experiment? You throwing it in their hole? Or are you just sucking it up and buying those Traeger pellets? I worked at an Italian restaurant in college and we just used hardwood, but our pizza oven was much larger than this. It had an electronic convection system that made it almost like a jet of air come through there. And as the earthen uh, hearth surfaces of the oven got hot you could just stick a piece of unlit wood in there and it would just spontaneously combust so i believe the geometry and the scale of this oven they don't make it feasible for you to use hardwoods or even charcoal you got to stick with the pellet folks thank you so much for tuning in for jtv this is jason i'll see y'all next time